Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video, I wanted to go ahead and just explain to you guys the reasons why I chose Berserker for my Life Righteous Fire character and just kind of giving a comparison mainly to Chieftain, um, but to pretty much all the other Ascendancy classes as well. So before I start, I just want to say, let me know if you guys would prefer for me to do my YouTube formatting for types of videos like this in this format, like in this scene, or if I should just do my basic scene like this. I can probably get a new scene made as well, but this is just something to think about. Anyway though, uh, let's go ahead and jump right on into this. So the main choices between choosing Berserker for my Righteous Fire character is Berserker gains attack speed on pretty much every single baby node with the exception of the one leading to Rite of Ruin and the one leading to Warbringer. Now the reason why attack speed is important is attack speed allows you to scale your shield charge. Shield charge is your main source of mobility. The faster you go from point A to point B, the less likely you are to be standing in bears or ground effects or just dying in general because you have high mobility. So it kind of really suits my play style. Now also you get something like Crave the Slaughter, which is literally just additional movement speed. Um, whether you've been hit recently or you haven't been hit recently, you either gain attack speed, which scales shield charge, or movement speed, which scales shield charge. Aspect of Carnage is extremely good, and the reason why is it gives 40% more damage, and Righteous Fire only uses four support gems, with the exception of a Delirium Essence Craft, which is like a pseudo five link. This kind of puts us to like a pretend six link, which is really cool with the build. And then you get Warbringer. Warbringer is like the most, I don't even want to say underused thing, because people obviously know about it now, but it's just so strong. Say you have 10,000 life on your character, which is a bit extreme, but you can you can definitely hit 10,000 life if you invest into your builds, right? Uh, obviously, if you're playing a, a primary high life stacking build. Warbringer would then heal 25% of your maximum life, which is 2,500, plus the endurance charge regeneration, assuming uh, if you're using endurance charges for or during cry, which is like another 500 HP, which puts you close to 3,000 health for just using a war cry, specifically enduring cry. And I think this is just insane because the one big downside that a lot of life builds uh, suffer is having to run a life flask for those oh shit scenarios. And because you're running a life flask, you don't have the ability to run something else. Like for example, um, now obviously you would use a basalt, but let's use an example of something that could go in there. Uh, you could use like a Quartz Flask, which would be 10% dodge, 10% spell dodge. You could use any type of uh, unique flask that would go there. So Rumi's Concoction is very good. It's armor, block, and spell block. Um, Taste of Hate, although... I don't even... No, Taste of Hate is bad because... No, no, Taste of Hate is fine, actually. As long as you're not using Pyre, Taste of Hate is fine. Um, I don't really know what else. But in general, you just have an extra flask slot that you can put something else in. And then Rite of Ruin is very good because it's another attack speed steroid and it helps cancel out your Aspect of Carnage. It's 6% reduced damage taken if you've killed recently, which in a map is going to be up pretty much 100% of the time. Like, let's be honest. On bosses, don't expect for this to be up. So let's take a look at the really common choice of Ber or, uh, Chieftain. So Chieftain, you would probably go with, let's see, where, did they, where does Chieftain even go? Ramako, Sunlight with I don't I don't even know. Let's let's just pretend. All right. I've never played Chieftain RF before. So you get 10% increased fire damage and life regen. This is a very good point for just one baby point. Uh Nagamu's Flame Advance, 35% increased damage with hits and ailments against burning enemies. Unfortunately, I do not believe this works at all for Righteous Fire because Righteous Fire is not a hit and Righteous Fire is not an ailment. So I do not believe this even works. I could be incorrect though, I apologize if I give any misinformation. Then you have Ramako Sunlight, which is maximum life regenerated per second per endurance charge. When you or your totems kill a burning enemy, you have a chance at gaining endurance charges. So this is more of like the lazy play style where you don't really have to hit Enduring Cry and you get very good life regeneration by doing this. This is something that's very good for running like Labyrinth for example, where you just don't really care about Labyrinth traps and you just want to just run through everything lazy mode. This is a very good ascendancy for something like that. I believe next you would get, what does this do? Nothing here even helps you. So you would go, I think, Tawaho's Forest Strength, which gives you some armor, uh, all resistance, and strength. 
And then I, I don't know what your last point would be. Maybe moon presence and you'd use like a decoy totem or you'd use a scorching ray totem and you'd make them take less damage and take increased damage, which would apply to your righteous fire. So overall, if you want more regeneration and you're looking for specifically life regeneration, this is where I would recommend Chieftain. Otherwise, I personally do not really see a point in Chieftain. It seems to lack quite a bit of damage compared to uh, Berserker. And whereas the life regeneration, in my opinion, is very nice, I would prefer a more sustainable source like a Warcry heal because I don't really think life regeneration is too difficult to acquire these days. There are so many uniques you can use for life regeneration or even just bases like a Marble Amulet is 1.6 life regen per second. Um, you can then craft on that. There are like unique gloves that give 2% life regen if you have a certain amount of strength, you know, kind of etc, etc. Now, one thing to note is that Chieftain should realistically always have a little bit of a higher life pool than a Berserker. Um, obviously, if you minus the aspect of Carnage, it's always going to be more tanky. But just because of the 10% extra strength scaling, this would kind of push you into doing things with like Dune Kubiari uh, or maybe even, you know, Iron Will and then eventually use a Scorching Ray Totem and whatnot. And then as for Juggernaut, which is the last one I'm going to compare to, then I'm going to give like an overall explanation kind of. Actually, I don't even know what I'm going to give. Uh, Juggernaut, I really have no clue what you would do. You would go unstoppable probably, so you cannot be slowed, frozen, or affected by temporal chains. Um, I don't think you need this at all. What does this do? Cannot be stunned. Armor received from body armor is doubled. I don't know if you would get this or not, because stun immunity is only one point. But... This stun immunity is pretty cool because you could use a Stib Knight Flask and you still can roll like evasion against blind. Um, probably go with plus one max endurance charge. Unrelenting is increased damage per endurance charge. Reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges. 25% chance that you would gain endurance charges. Uh, oh, it's just maximum. I feel like the last note is kind of like whatever. Unless you have like nine endurance charges or something. And then Unyielding is actually very good as well because you get a ton of life regen with Fortify on. If you want my honest opinion, I would never really play um, Righteous Fire as a Chieftain. And as a second choice, I would probably say Juggernaut is better. Uh, I feel like Juggernaut is a bit more flexible because of what they give. They get a decent amount of life regen. They get more mitigation. They get elemental resistance, which or elemental mitigation, which is often very difficult to acquire on life-based builds. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, I think that Juggernaut is a much better pick than Chieftain. I would say if you want to be more defensive, definitely go with this. So I don't know if I explained this in this video or not. Um, I had to retake this one time, so I apologize. But you can pretty much run Righteous Fire as any, any Ascendancy across the board. There's not really any requirements, right? You can solely run Righteous Fire through just in-game uniques and a couple of regeneration nodes on your passive tree, and you're already good to go with running Righteous Fire. The point is, is it comes to like a simple thing of just, you know, effectiveness. How effective do you want your build to be, right? If you play a Trickster as Righteous Fire, there's nothing wrong with playing it, but you're probably not going to get as much life as a Marauder, for example, because that's on the left side of the tree. The left side of the tree specifically favors armor, life, life regen, and I guess a lot of two-handed scaling. The right side of the tree is more like energy shield, uh, elemental damage, attack speed, evasion, and there's a bunch of other things, you know, uh, as well. But this is just kind of like my little bit of an explanation. Um, there are just so many ways you can play Righteous Fire. Figure out which way that you want to play it. And remember, one of the most important things to search is life regeneration. Simply just type in life regeneration, or I think this node specifically over here is a bit different. This is life regenerated per second, so it doesn't tag on the regeneration. Um, but these are kind of the things you want to be building towards just to kind of get an idea of, you know, I guess what you want to do with your character. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much going to be the video. I apologize if it was a little, like, confusing. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult for me to explain very basic things. Uh, so I do apologize. I don't mean to come off as like an asshole or anything, uh, but that's pretty much about it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Remember, if you liked, or not if you liked, uh, let me know what you guys think of um, this like little temporary YouTube uh, thing. I don't know if the nodes are too small for you guys, but like I said, we'll probably get a, a separate like YouTube panel because this meant this one right here is meant for stream anyway. But like I said, have a wonderful have a wonderful.
Have a wonderful time, everybody, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, boys.